totally unrelated, but happy spooky season. But most importantly, have you ever wondered how to organize your notes to where you actually understand the subject matter? And then create a sustainable study plan for said notes? Well, if you answer any of these questions, then you're in the right place because today we are getting into the nitty gritty of my notes and my well thought out study plan. But first and foremost, why take notes? Why are notes even helpful? Why the heck do I have to write this, that, and the third in my notebook and I don't want to? Well, in the visual representation, I'm going to show you. So take a look at these two presentations for me and tell me, which one holds and grips your attention? All right, are you done? It's this one right here. And if you said the first one, you just build different because how is this engaging? There's no color. And even if there's no color, there's no fancy font or at least a font that pops out at you. And this is just the first impressions. And first impressions are everything, guys. So if you're bored by the first page, then you can only imagine what the rest of the presentation is like. And if there is something interactive, then you're probably not gonna be excited about it or even expect it. But for the second one, you definitely will because the first page has so much color. It has this crazy cool font. And that's how you know that the rest of the presentation is going to be slamming. And that's what I want you to think about when it comes to making your notes. And I say your notes because you need to make them and style them to your taste. That's why you think that notes suck and why they don't mean anything is because you're not organizing them and you're not making them in a way to where it's holding your attention. If you add some color, if you add a font and I, you don't have to get crazy like the girlies do on Pinterest, you could just have a simple title in some blue and then you can highlight some information and it could still hold your attention. It's that simple because it's what you want to do. And if you just think about that, the notes, I promise you guys, will be so much fun. Heck, it was for me when I started doing it in my 10th year in um, high school for chemistry. And chemistry was the freaking worst class. So when I added some color to my notebook, I was like, wow, okay, now this class is fun. See, the class is fun and the notes are fun. So keep that in mind as I take you through my note-taking process, which is in order as followed. So you gotta start somewhere and you have to start with some information. I'm talking about referencing the syllabus, the textbook, if there is one, your design inspo on Pinterest and any other information that you seem to pick up. Heck, if you wanna gather extra information, that's good on you. That means one, you like the subject and two, you're just ready to take it seriously. But you need information to start. And once you have that information, don't write in your notebook yet because I want you to lay out your page because one minute you're putting two boxes at the top and then the second you're like, mm, I probably could have put a diagram or maybe the diagram should be here and the title should be here. No, the title should be at the bottom and you just go on this constant loop of what ifs and unfortunately you can't change it because you already put highlighter and pen to that paper. So by laying it out and you could do this either on a tablet or a piece of paper. For this example, I put it on paper but I do do it on my tablet because there's a lot more room. Okay, you have your information, you've plotted out how you want that page, now you can put down your information, but I want you to do it carefully. And I'm mostly saying this for the people that have terrible freaking handwriting like myself, because again, if you mess up that information and you're putting it in pen, you're not going to be able to take it back. And remember, you need to read this so that way you can finish your assignments, you can take your quizzes and tests and get an A on those, and you can use it in in-class discussion if it's needed. And last but not least, add some charts, add some figures, add some basically illustrations to make your notes pop. And I say this as an optional because not many people have printers, not many people have the ink, not many people have resources for it. But if you do, then this is going to make your notes, like I said, pop. As for materials, I prefer a pen, a pencil, a thicker pen and a highlighter and I prefer those out of everything else in my pouch and I didn't bring my pouch today so that's why I'm just naming it off guys but I prefer these because again I'm adding color and stuff but because I have a variety of pens and pencils and stuff because the fat pen will help me with making some letters bold or even for highlighting but the skinnier pen will help me with actually writing because the fatter pen is just not going good with my handwriting and the types of pens that I use actually come from all the way from Japan. I think it's, oh, hold on, I actually have it. It's actually this one. Can you even see it? Oh my gosh, it's freaking blurry. But yeah, it's this one and it's 0, 0.35 millimeters. So it, that should give you a good reference to how skinny and smooth as ink. It's so good, guys, that this pen is. And then as for the fab pen, and it's a crazy story about this, is that I originally bought that pen in the hopes that it would be color ink. Newsflash, it wasn't, but I decided to keep it because it has this pretty outer shell and it's 
fatter, like I said, than the scooter pen. As for highlighters, I use two types of set. I use the famous Zebra Mod Liners, and then I do the not-so-relevant premium highlighters. Both of them are still good because the premium highlighters, they have a good grip. It's not that many colors, but the ink and stuff is still vibrant. And of course, I use the Zebra Mod Liners because there's a lot of colors, and it has the highlighter and the fine tip. So that way, I get a little bit of edge on each. Other supplies include a pencil sharpener if I'm using a wooden pencil, and I have an eraser for my mechanical pencil, and wooden eraser without an eraser, a ruler so that way I can make the boxes that you will see in my notes, and most importantly, these clear, sticky, transparent. <coughs> sticky notes i don't know why i'm getting so excited about it. but it's so good because my textbook is a rental i have to return it so of course i can't like directly write into it but the sticky notes they give you a loophole because all you have to do is just take that off and it's like you never even wrote in it 10 out of 10 recommend and you can find those on amazon and now we get into the actual structure of my notes and i promise you guys it's not so complicated especially after i detail all of the stuff from above so the first page i like to start off with just the unit and the way that my class is separated by the way is human evolution sorry it's separated by four units and there's topics at least four topics or yeah four or three topics each for each of those units so right now we're still in unit one so i put the units just at the top and then i put the overall name of the unit then i put the four topics and it's really four because genes alleles and phenotypes is a two-parter two-part so i put the titles of those there and then i leave a little bit of space because that's where i'll be putting up my follow-up questions and the reason i do this is because i want to be able to say hey i know this hey i know that i want to say that i actually learned something and just didn't do this just to do it so i can get a grade so by leaving that space i can then just put the answers to the questions that are there and if the syllabus doesn't provide a title doesn't provide any questions just make some up next i go into the actual information so for the first topic i go into that information and this topic is relatively short so i only stuck it out to one page but for genes and alleles i did three pages because again two part i want to be sure i got all that information and then once that topic was done i then skip a page so that way i can go on to the next topic and then when all of the topics for that unit are done and we can move on to unit two i change it into a different color so for the unit colors i have green for unit one yellow for unit two blue for unit three and i'm still figuring out the kinks about this but i'm probably going to go for pink for the last unit so you have these notes and you also have notes for another class and you also have notes for another one and now you don't know what to do and you have this quiz that's in three days and then the test that's coming up at the end of the week or whatever basically i'm giving you guys a scenario that you guys really need a study plan study plan study plan study plan <laughs> gotta gotta make a make a study plan because it's very important it may seem easy to just cram and think that you're gonna pass that test or pass that quiz but it's not that simple you need to have a plan and trust me it'll help like i was one of those people that thought i'll just cram i'll be best and guess what that landed me with probably c and even a d on most of the quizzes and tests and the first thing with your study plan is that you need to have chosen subjects that you plan to study and i'm talking about chosen subjects that you feel are relevant at the time if you know that you have a quiz on english on thursday and today is wednesday then why in the heck on wednesday would you just choose to study math it doesn't make any sense so you got to prioritize those subjects and make a to-do list on said subjects it also wouldn't hurt to have an academic calendar of the assignments and the quizzes and the tests and basically all the things that you're going to be doing for that class throughout the semester that way you'll have a detailed plan and you'll be able to stick to it because you know exactly what's coming and there ain't no surprises but all that prep will be for waste if you decide to go into your car and you don't get anything done area is everything too and i'm not going to say you have to be in the quietest place in a sh library but i'm also saying that you shouldn't willingly go in an area where there's construction and there's jackhammers just everywhere so i would suggest either a coffee shop or a place on campus like here at my student center this is a great place to study because there's not really that much noise or if you're in high school if you have a teacher that you can kick it with or you know of that place and you got the hookup that you can go to that place in order to study but you shouldn't stay in that place for that long. And this is where I get to the part where you need to switch those places so that way they don't become stagnant and stale. So here you are in your area with your academic calendar, with your chosen subjects, this list, and you study. And then you study. 
and then you study and you study and you study and before you know it six hours have gone by and you have an a you haven't went to the bathroom and you haven't drank water and i'm saying this to say is that you need a break go and stretch watch your favorite tv show get something to eat preferably i say 30 minutes or an hour if you haven't eaten a meal and during that time i just like to get up walk around because these long legs they're made for walking so yeah take those breaks y'all and take a couple deep breaths because <sighs> you got it okay spitfire assume presumed questions because i know you guys have them you guys can put your questions down in the comments but these are just my assumed frequently asked questions Sav, how in the heck can you just do all of this pretty note taking this aesthetic note taking while you're in class you can't just pull out your highlighters and your pants and all that and still keep up with it you're exactly right and that's why i don't that's why i crack open my laptop and i follow the lecture and i just type that information in and like i said if i'm representing textbooks and the syllabus then that information i should have already went through the first day that i got it and all of it just really stems down to where you need to have communication with your teacher well not me because if you in college they should not really care i'm talking about the middle schoolers and the high schoolers that are wanting to do this communicate with your teacher just tell your teacher straight up hey this is how i take notes this is how i'm going to understand the material and understand the lecture that you're giving me i really need to just type out my notes on the computer and if you need more evidence that i'm not fooling around then you can go ahead and take a look at them at the end of the day clear cut and precise of how you're going to learn and what is right for you in that classroom and honestly the teacher shouldn't even have a problem teachers comment down below do you have a problem with this because nowadays i know y'all struggling so a kid taking notes on a computer and they show you at the end of the day that they weren't playing route is nothing compared to the kids that just straight up do not want to learn in your classroom so that shouldn't be a problem for you so this is mostly for the high schoolers and middle schoolers you should already know that you do not have to take notes in our class or gym but that also applies to english or math or any other subject that you see that is not fit especially if you notice that the teacher really hands out a lot of handouts than actually giving a lecture trust me save your notebook don't take notes for those classes if you know that they're not the lecturing type everything that i described thus far can be translated electronically yes if you do not like the paper then you can move on to the tablet or the computer and for the tablet there are some great note-taking apps i use color notes and there's also good notes 5 but that one costs money so i wouldn't suggest that color notes works just fine because you have the free version with everything you need and the only reason why you will get the premium version is because you like the um silhouette font or whatever the heck yes i write up my study plans by hand on paper that's just how i am if i write it on my computer i am not going to retain it and i know i'm going to get distracted and finally i should have said this earlier but switching your studies place is just a suggestion if you feel that the place that you're in is already high activity enough as it is or you just don't have any other options then of course you don't have to change it and there you have it a step-by-step -step guide to my well constructed notes and study plan if you enjoyed this video don't forget to leave a like support as a sub and comment down below your favorite class slash subject and for my college peeps what are you majoring in see you soon my loves and have a wonderful day bye <laughs>